Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi. This is Eve. Uh, I'm the marketing director at Strapi, and uh, I'm super happy to be here and uh, to host this webinar for you. Our developer advocate, Daniel, was, uh, sup uh, was supposed to host it, and hopefully he'll be able to join, but uh, he has uh, some uh, um, issues with this connection uh, because of a big, a huge storm. So hi, hi, Rachel, hi, Jelma, hi, Michael, hi, Scott, hi, Philippe. <laughs> Good to see, to see you all. It's great to see your, your, those names that I, I see uh, very often as a uh, guest uh, host on the blog. And uh, so, yeah, thanks for, for, for all the, the work that you do on the site for, and for the community. Uh, so yeah, today the the idea of the website of this webinar is to uh, to showcase uh, what we did uh, with Strapi and how we how we use Strapi to our Strapi.io website that uh, you all know, uh, and to help uh, me and Daniel, if you can join, uh, explain that to you. Uh, we have the great pleasure to have uh, Raoul and Marion. Uh, the two front-end developers from the Unlikely Studio, the agency that uh, have been working with us on uh, developing this website. They did an amazing job, and it's always a pleasure to work with them. So I'm super happy that uh, that uh, they, they they're here with, with us. So if you want to say a word, uh, Raoul, maybe yeah. Marion. We are very yeah. happy to be here with you as well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the idea of this uh, this webinar is to uh, to show you what we did and to show you what's under the hood. So uh, I'll start maybe to share my screen and um, and and we start to show you what's under the hood. So. Hi, Will. Hi, Katu. Hi, Michelle. Feel free to uh, to to ask any question that you have uh, in the chat on the question uh, uh, tab uh, of uh, of uh, of this webinar, and uh, we'll jump. We'll just uh, jump from the presentation to uh, the question and try to answer all your questions. So feel free to ask uh, any question. Um, so this is uh, the Strapi that you know, and this is actually the, 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 the backend of Strapi. So, uh, and the Strapi website is here. Hey, Arno, Arno, uh, Aloui, he is also from uh, Unlikely, and uh, he is the backend developer that also did a lot of customization. And Arno, I didn't ask you yet, but we might have uh, another webinar with you sometime, some, someday to discuss all the customization that you made with Strapi. And we can ask him a question if we don't, uh, <laughs> if we have a question on the backend directly on the chat. Great. So yeah, uh, the Strapi website, uh, it's here. So um, uh, a bit of context, uh, you all know that we, if I, you, I don't know if you know, but we did a, a rebranding of, uh, of Strapi uh, early this year. And um, the idea was to, 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 to develop the brand, uh, to, to, to explain uh, with a new branding and a new website, uh, all the identity of Strapi. And in that process, we uh, rebuilt the, our website that was actually um, just uh, uh, HTML and uh, NGS. Uh, and it was the website that was working actually already very well, uh, that has been made by the founders at the time that, uh, uh, Jim, Aurélien, and Pierre at the time when they were um, uh, students and uh, just after when they st started the, the company. But we wanted something more professional, and of course we wanted some uh, a website that uh, would uh, uh, run with Strapi. And to do so, we uh, worked with um, uh, a designer to help us uh, develop all the templates. And at first, uh, we had just a five, five templates so the, the first five templates were the template for the home page, uh, the template for the community page, the template for the use case page, the, uh, the case study, 
because we had those case studies. Uh, and, uh, and so we just had a few, a few pages. And in the back end, uh, those pages are actually the ones that are here. So um, the Strapi website is made uh, of collection types, of course, all those, uh, those collection types, uh, for example, the blog posts, all the case studies that uh, are collections. And at the time when we uh, decided to, to create uh, the, the first architecture, all the, um, the single uh, pages on the website, we defined them as single types. So that's why you can see here, I don't know if you see uh, properly, but that's, uh, the community page, uh, the contact page, for example, the content architecture page, all those pages were, um, were single uh, pages. And with Raoul, we decided to create them as, a, as single types. Um, Maybe we can do a little, a little uh, stop on the content type builder. If, uh, if you want to have some information, can we zoom in here? Yeah, sure, sure. So here, yeah. Is it better? Faith. Um, thanks, okay, great. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe we can do a little focus on the content type builder. It would be uh, maybe uh, interesting for you to see how we created the different uh, the different uh, pages. And Marion, maybe you want to have a word uh, on that? Sure. Yeah. So first of all, um, the thing I wanted to say is that what I really like about Strapi is that the the UI is very clean. It's very easy to to get the basics right away. So you can very easily start doing your website from from the go, the get go, which is very 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 cool. And what I really like about Strapi as well is that you can very easily create a shared uh, component library that you can uh, also uh, use inside um, one another. So for example, uh, at first for the, the Strapi website, we created a, an image component, which is very basic, very important as well. And after a few weeks, we realized that we also needed to implement some animations sometimes for some images. So we basically just had to add uh, an extra layer of that image component, the Lodi animation layer. Thank you for showing that. And we just had to add an extra component it's, uh, inside an, an existing component without breaking anything that we, we, we did before. And that's, I think it's one of the, the biggest strengths of Strapi at the moment. It's, it's very handy, very customizable, very flexible, and it's probably one of the, the best things that I like about this, uh, this CMS. Yeah, it's, I can show you what, what was happening. Actually, uh, so you, you will learn a bit of, about the history and, and, and how we, we developed uh, that website. Uh, you know that uh, we are not a lot of people uh, at Strapi, and uh, so we all do a lot of different tasks. And, uh, and for that website, we first thought of uh, having uh, just an image uh, here. And, um, and so we, that's what Marion said. When the, we created it, we created uh, the, this, uh, this uh, content type. Let me show you the, the page for the home page. Yeah, that one. Uh, so where is it? It must be here. Uh, you can yeah. also, um, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And so it was just an image with the, uh, I'm sorry, how about the right place? Um, and it was before the media library was released because uh, as you may see, we have like a, a field called add text, but mm -hmm. it's now useless uh, thanks to the media library of Strapi. You can directly put uh, an alternative text in, the, in your image. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and so in, in the in the back end, let me show you um, in here. Uh, sorry, it's here for the animation. Yeah, so this is the home page of Strapi. And uh, this is the structure uh, that uh, we developed. So maybe you want uh, us maybe to go in details a bit on the different uh, ways, uh, all the customization that we can do with Strapi. Um, 
something that is as a content manager, I'm 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 spending uh, quite a bit of time uh, during uh, uh, my uh, my work to uh, to work on the website, and um, uh, something that I think is absolutely great is the fact that I'm completely autonomous uh, on the website on the web page creation. Uh, I can create a lot of uh, pages from scratch and I can customize and change a, a lot of uh, pages. So for example, um, here, this theme allows me to decide if I want to have uh, a, a, a light navigation or a dark navigation like on uh, white pages like that. Um, this allows me to remove the, the navigation. Uh, these are other stuff that are linked to our pressing page. page. Uh, we have a different theme here that change the, the different colors uh, for, um, for the page. So it will change uh, the color of the decorative uh, icons. Uh, let me show you. Uh, on a page like that, it will change the color of the labels. It will change the color of uh, the decorative uh, uh, object that are, that are elements, thank you, that are here. And uh, we have different, uh, different ways to do, so, to do so. Then after a classic uh, field like title and text, here are the CTAs. Um, the CTAs can also be customized with the color. We can define a lot of, uh, we can define uh, where we open the page. And this, uh, Marion, I'll let you talk about that little uh, thing. It's, uh, it's an adjustment to, for performance, right? Yeah, exactly. It's because, of, um, because we're using Next.js as a front-end solution. And to, to use all the capabilities of the link element um, that we use from Next.js, we needed to know what kind of the type of page that we were, we were going to link um, an element to. For example, we can say that um, uh, this link is going to be towards a single page or universal page or a very specific page, like um, integration page or user story. Mm -hmm. Uh, and one, one interesting thing also on this component, uh, as you can see, you have the theme drop down. And uh, as uh, Marion said about the component system of uh, Strapi, if, uh, if, we decided, if we decide to add a color to, to the button, we just, uh, we just have to go to the content type builder and uh, add a, uh, a color to the button component, and it's going to be editable across the whole website. So you, you don't have to create a new component or uh, go mm -hmm. to every pages where you used the button component. You just have to add a color in the button component, and it's going to be updated everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And actually, that's also it's the same logic that we had for the, for the animation, right? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. it, it, it's exactly the same logic as the image component. Mm. Uh, we have a few questions from, uh, let's see, because I, I just tried to keep track of the question uh, as well. Uh, we have a question from Alan uh, that what is the ChargeB component? So maybe, uh, Marion, you can talk about that. Yeah, well, ChargeB, it was um, used to, to trigger the, the, the availability of um, a payment platform on the pricing page, because before it didn't work that way. Yeah. So uh, we decided that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Marion, just a precision. We are using uh, ChargeB for, uh, I don't know if Alan, you know what uh, ChargeB is, but uh, ChargeB is a, is a solution that we use to uh, do our invoicing and that uh, to do the, the payment. Yeah. So Marion, go on. Yeah, so that, that was uh, about it. It's just that before we, we had a very specific page uh, on which ChargeB was, um, was activated, was enabled all the time. And then we decided to make that uh, more dynamic and to allow uh, Eve to enable that feature on any page that he wants. Yeah. Um, back on the on the on the website and on the home page uh, backend. So here you can see the uh, the Loti animation uh, section uh, component in the component that we created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And so uh, basically here were uh, the, um, the images that we used to, to have. So this was, this was, this is the, the, the default image that uh, loads in case there's, uh, there's, uh, we, in case we can't lose, uh, load the, the animation, right, Raoul? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is the animation that has been, uh, this is the component that has been added where uh, we could add those animation made uh, on Loti. And then we only had to uh, upload the path to the to the URL for the Loti animation, and then it would it was loaded here. And we could uh, also uh, change the different uh, uh, settings to have uh, to have it uh, uh, different uh, on different pages. Yes, you can host the like your motion designer is designing a Loti animation, and he can host the export and uh, put the export URL in the path field. Or you can just copy paste the Loti animation data right here, and uh, uh, instantly your image be is becoming an animation. Yeah, I just see that we have a few questions, so I'll just uh, go back to the first one from Simon. Uh, what server, service, and configuration are you guys using? AWS DO. Uh, oh, yeah, you said that there's a repair already, so yeah, we're using AWS, yeah. Exactly. Um, what kind of product you use? Uh, can we connect Amazon platform to strap it to reduce the workload on our server? Yes. And Scott, uh, you had a question. Curious to see the next GS implementation, how the component from the backend is tied together and how that affects SEO, given that each component layout is an API call to Strapi. Yeah. So how do you want to? to uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, maybe I can share some code right now. Yeah. I'll try to share my screens. But basically, everything is static. So all the data is fetched uh, uh, at build time. And I will share my screen. OK. Uh, so we can take the example of uh, maybe the universal pages. Uh, Raul, could you increase the font size of Oh, your... yeah, sure. Yes, good. Thanks. Is, is it uh, good enough? Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> OK. So here is uh, the file where we fetched uh, universal pages. And uh, to share the slice, so as I said, right, everything is fetched uh, during, uh, during build time. But uh, uh, we have so uh, sometimes we have to fetch more data uh, uh, in slices. So for example, if uh, I think we have a, a tweet uh, section. Uh, where we have to load some tweets. Yeah. And it's calling the a function uh, called get data dependencies. So it's the dependencies in terms of data of all the slices. And as you see here, there is it's just a simple switch case. And uh, you have like the type of the slice. And we are requesting the data we need in each slices. So the majority of slices do, it doesn't require more data, but sometimes for the tweets slices, for example, we need to fetch some tweets. And sometimes the data is coming from other sources. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, I think it, it was for partners, if I remember correctly, or user stories, but we are fetching data from GitHub. So there is a also. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do a first call to fetch all the data from Strapi. And after that, we, we do a simple map on the, on the array of slices and we fetch the additional data we need uh, to use. So that's also where we can, uh, where we can fetch some um, 
deeper level data from a, a relational field, for example. Yeah. Does uh, Scott, does this answer your, your question? Uh, yeah, question. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, question from Glenn, question from the web design firm. What was it like working with a client who has their own CMS? That must have been a different experience. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I think it was pretty interesting because we can, uh, uh, like we made some feedbacks uh, directly to them and we, 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 we could, we like, we spoke to us and, and they explained us uh, what they are planning to do with their roadmap. And so it was really, really interesting. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we, we built um, <clears throat> a couple of uh, very, um, very uh, important features while we were developing this website. As how we said, we developed the media library during the website, so we, we also had to change a little bit the workflow. So that was also a bit challenging for, for the agency, I guess. Um, this is the uh, universal, uh, the universal uh, section, the universal collection type that uh, how was uh, talking about. And uh, I'd like to show you so, uh, that you see here, this is uh, um, how I, as a content manager, how I create a new page now. Uh, and I want to show you how easy it is uh, and how flexible it is. Uh, so when I want to create a new page, I just go on that collection type universal. I uh, create a new universal and I just uh, choose my uh, URL. So test, uh, test the page for webinar. And, uh, oops, sorry, what did I do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, and then I choose in the settings, uh, some, uh, some things, so as I told you before, if I want the navigation to be light or dark, if I want to have a menu or not. And here's the SEO section where I can uh, also uh, choose all my SEO in, in uh, SEO uh, information. And uh, um, here are all the components that have been created for, uh, for the Strapi website. As you can see, there's a lot of them. Oh. Yeah, I'll just, uh, sorry, yeah. I'll just zoom in. Is it better, Philip? So here are all the, the components that we created to, to create the Strapi website. And we have, uh, a uh, lot of hero uh, different page, for example, and I just have to choose one of those heroes. They said I want to have a page based on the feature uh, template. And then I can just add my different content here, the different images, the and just add any component, one after the other. So that's how easy it is. And uh, when I save my page, uh, I, it will trigger uh, a webhook that uh, triggers the build of the website. So it's uh, as easy as it is. Um, so here are uh, the, all the pages that have been done since then. So you see there's quite a few of them. There's a few <laughs> coming soon on the website. So uh, we also have new pages that are coming. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's one of the best feature for you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and uh, it's something also that what is, what is interesting is that it came uh, during the process of creating the website. Yeah, um, yeah. maybe Raoul, you want to, to, to say a word about that? Yeah, I think the Strapi website at first was just a landing page. And, uh, and after it became like three templates, three or four templates. So we, did, we didn't think about the website as a very, as very flexible. So like we, we had like some different templates, but it was very like uh, fixed and we cannot really move. Like uh, Eve doesn't, didn't have, uh, I think enough control uh, on how, uh, on how things were, were made. And, uh, we had a lot of uh, requests from uh, from Eve 
to add uh, more pages. And it became like very time consuming to, to add uh, an, another file to Next.js uh, uh, and it was very repetitive. So we decided to, to create uh, this uh, special type of page called Universal. So, uh, so any, any, any person, uh, even an undeveloper person can create pages, uh, use all the, all the slices and all the components of the websites across, across all, all the pages. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, I think it's really, really cool. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's a good idea because as I, as I, when I see the, the number of universal pages. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's not finished at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Donato, hey, you, is, yes? So, sorry, did, uh, could you uh, zoom in yeah, sure. uh, a bit? Command and the plus key. The font yeah. is a bit too small. Okay, can you see better now? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm now on the the, the global single type uh, to answer uh, Donato's uh, question in the, in the question tab about the main navigation, and uh, this navigation is also super uh, flexible and interesting to 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 do so. Um, Maybe after uh, Marion or Raoul, you will explain how you built it on uh, in the Content Type Builder. But uh, on the Content Manager uh, side, uh, you can see here, for example, like the, the section uh, here. It's um, we actually have uh, one column here that is managed in this section here. We are, we have uh, the um, the pushes here. That are uh, sorry that are managed uh, here. Oh, sorry here. And this uh, section here manage the the label uh, that is in the navigation, and we can make it uh, clickable or not, just by uh, adding a, a a link here. Uh, you see here that there's two sections because actually we are on the staging environment and as you can see we have a full section of uh, features that are coming soon so uh, <laughs> so you have that in uh, avant première like uh, you can see that those, those pages are coming soon. Um, Typically one of the very good use case of the the imbrication of components inside components because here it's just basically putting links inside other section as a repeatable, as a repeatable, and Strapi allows us to do that very easily. And also, uh, the the UI we get from that section that could be quite difficult to understand. I think Strapi makes it very easy, very clean. So, so you can see here the uh, the uh, as you said, uh, Marion, uh, all the 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 fact that we have those components and components. Mm -hmm. And that's how we made it uh, so flexible. So basically, from from my side, I can really add a new uh, column of links here without asking anyone. Uh, I can just change, of course, any any part of the the navigation by myself. Uh, and that's actually what it does. Because if you are uh, sometimes on our website, you can see that we add uh, a few pages uh, from time to time. Um, yeah, so that's about it for the uh, for the global uh, website. I th I think it would be interesting also to show you um, to show you. Uh, ch -ch -ch. So here, this is a component newsletter. So it's basically the default with the this global uh, settings uh, single type. Uh, is used to manage all the default uh, information for different aspects. So those are the different uh, information that uh, we have by default for the newsletter, for, for the newsletter components where you subscribe for the newsletter. And if you didn't, uh, please uh, go and subscribe on our newsletter uh, to have news from us. Sorry, uh, could you zoom in? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and I wanted to show you also the footer. The footer here is also managed uh, the same way that we manage the the header. Uh, so that's this. These are all the menu. The these are the two buttons that are here. 
here, they're managed here and here. And the sections that are in the in the in the footer. We also have something that is quite uh, funny and, and nice. Um, this uh, section here is managing all the SEO by default. So when, if I don't have the time to 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 create uh, the specific meta description and meta title for any page, we ha will have those uh, information by default. Uh, this is also quite nice. It uh, allows uh, me to prevent indexing for, for to make sure that uh, those pages are not uh, uh, indexed by Google. And the thing I wanted to show you, this is a banner that uh, we showcase uh, uh, for new information that you see when you uh, arrive on the Shopee website, on top of the website. And we can have all those uh, uh, eventual and uh, and to have more news uh, showcased here just by uh, you know selecting a, a publishing date and having some content here. And this is also something that I think it's uh, it's uh, it's nice and funny. Uh, we've been uh, supporting uh, the the pride. Uh, we've uh, adding just a. A very discreet uh, uh, rainbow at the at the at the footer of our website. I don't know if you saw it, and that just uh, the way to activate it and deactivate it. So it's uh, very uh, easy and practical for me. So I have, I have really a lot of uh, flexibility, and uh, it's very easy to to make that website evolve. Um, I see a question from. Uh, Ronnie, is everything uh, you're showing so far native to Strapi, or did you do custom development for the back office interface? Um, I think everything is native to Strapi mm -hmm. right now. And uh, yeah. the mm -hmm. only code part we had to do, but it's like easier with Strapi, is like some uh, some articles, like the, the all the articles of the blog are sent to, to Algolia. So Arnaud, our backend developer, managed this part. And uh, every every time you create, update, delete an article, uh, it's sent to Algolia. Thanks to the hook system of Strapi, it's very easy to, to, to know uh, when a content is ed edited, created, or deleted. So you can uh, trigger actions on external services. Mm. But uh, it's there is almost no uh, backend uh, backend development uh, involved in this website in terms of interface. I'm, I mean, like uh, everything we did uh, here to make the website, uh, it was native to Strapi. Right. Uh, how long did the content modeling take? Uh, which tool did you use? Well, um, Raoul, uh, maybe on the side, yeah. uh, you, it's, it, we did it a bit on, in the flow, no, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, basically, when we finished uh, to develop a component, we directly uh, 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 did the content modeling. And I have to say that it was pretty fast, actually, like in, in 20 minutes, you can have a dynamic component. And uh, I really, I think it's like the faster tools to, to, to make dynamic components. Honestly, yeah, like a dynamize a component in less than 20 minutes is like uh, really, really good. Yeah, maybe we can show that in, yeah, Daniel. Sorry, I just, I have a question about um, the process. Yep. I think it would be nice to share that. How did you go from design um, mockups and um, like Figma sketches to content modeling and then front end development? How uh, how was that journey? Well, um, the the process was actually to it started with content. We really uh, started uh, to to 
to develop uh, the the design was developed from the content uh, that we wanted to to show. So really, the the, the first step was really the content. Then we had uh, some design uh, developed. Um, the, we we worked with a designer from the studio Voila and uh, Julien Julien Renvoyé, and he did a, a great job for the for the first uh, the first template that we did. The only thing I would say is that the design was not um, uh, it was really like uh, interesting, but it was maybe a bit difficult for Raoul at first to create those components from this from those designs. So that's really something that uh, was uh, the little uh, thing that we. Uh, had to, to work on at the beginning. And uh, from that, uh, I, first started to, I first started to do the, the content modeling myself. Uh, but then Raoul, as a front-end uh, developer, like, preferred to uh, create the content modeling by himself while he was doing the front-end. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's easier for the dev to, to do the content modeling. Yeah. Uh, and basically, how we did it is, uh, we created the component uh, in React, and uh, we tried to map the name of the field by the name of the props we use in our React component. And this is also another strength of uh, component system of Strapi is is like uh, the components uh, is how we do websites. In React, so if you uh, if you use if you create, uh, I think we have a label, title, text, uh, components, uh, uh, which is repeated a lot in the website. Uh, basically, uh, there is a label, a title, and a text props on our React components, and in Strapi there is a label, title, text components uh, also in the in the content model. And I, uh, the name of the field is mapped to the name of the props in React. This way, you can very easily um, uh, uh, dynamize your your, your uh, next uh, JS or React website with Strapi. And very interesting. Yeah, and this is uh, the component and the, the capability of imbricating a lot of components because this is how we do in front end. We we do components and we. We reuse them across the website, and we do like a, uh, a lot of imbrication of components, and a lot of CMS are limited in terms of uh, how deep we can we can go uh, in terms of components, and uh, and with Strap it's almost unlimited. So you can really map how your components is, is made uh, uh, with how you will model your components in, in Strap. Great. I don't know if it's clear does it enough. Answer your, your question, Daniel? Yeah, th yeah, that does answer my question. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, follow up question, and then I'll let everyone else answer, ask uh, a few questions. I um, So, I, Eve is yet to demo this. I think it's one super cool feature that we have in the admin panel is you're able to build pages just by filling in content types. How did you achieve something like that with Strapi in, in, in the front end? So without how, because you, you mentioned already that um, the components in Strapi were inspired by the React components, but how did you how how did you enable that functionality of building out uh, web pages just by editing the content in a in a single type or a collection type? Uh, so uh, so your question is like are we how uh, Eve is able to create uh, universal pages and how? How it works in the front end, right? Yes. Yeah. That is my question. Maybe okay. I can share some some code. Sure. Sure thing. So. Basically, uh, so as we said, we are using Next.js as a as our front end uh, uh, framework. And everything is basically handled by, by Next.js and Strapi. Could so, you zoom in a bit? Yeah, sure. Maybe. So basically, okay, uh, you in Next.js, you can uh, create uh, dynamic uh, routes. And uh, 
the pages are mapped to your page file. So what we did is just create a dynamic route at the root of our website called uh, slug.js. And automatically, uh, with Next.js, we are fetching all the possibilities of universal pages that uh, Eve created in, in Strapi. And uh, he, he can also uh, decide uh, what will be the slug and the URL of the, of the universal page. So I don't know if it answers your question, but basically, uh, Next and Strapi are handling most of the work. Yes, it does. Um, thank you for sharing that. That looks really good. The, the, that's a pretty cool feature from Next, the dynamic uh, pages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically, you are fetching all the all the universal contents, and you are uh, adjacent all the pages with uh, the, the corresponding props coming from Strapi. Yeah, I must say that as a content manager, the, the thing I want to, to, to say is actually, uh, you know, I, for, the, for the story, I joined Strapi when in October uh, 2018. And, um, and actually, I was completely blown away uh, when I started really to use Strapi, uh, to, to use the interface uh for that website because uh to be completely honest that was the first time that i really uh, had a deep uh usage of actually uh, strapi as a user it was with that project and uh, and really i was completely blown away by all the capabilities that i could have as a content manager to in all the all the pages all the flexibility and all i can do and i'm still uh, blown away at the moment because we are creating like a lot of new pages uh, that you will see very soon. And uh, all that, I'm doing it by myself. So really, it's, it's great. And you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, ha we, we, we have a question about SEO. How yeah. do you manage the SEO uh, in Strapi? In Strapi, in the, in the backend? Yeah. So uh, I went very quickly on it, but I'll show you again. Uh, the SEO is by default. Just zoom in. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'm just looking for the right section. Yeah, it's here. No, I think so uh, we are in um, we are in the global single type, and in that single type, that single type handles uh, all the global uh, uh, infos uh, for the for the website, so the navigation and other stuff. And by default, we have uh, this meta title that we can uh, uh, manage this meta description and the image with the alt, uh, alt image, the, the media here. And we can uh, really access uh, all the, the media library from here. <coughs> so this is by default uh, the, the information that we have on all the pages. But after that, if we go on a specific uh, uh, blog post, for example, um, let's go on the that one for example uh, we also have the this component that is here and we can of course uh, customize any uh, meta info that we want uh, on every pages and in the front that this uh, this component seo is uh, is handled like any other component of the website which means that when we build the page we're gonna call an seo component that will um, print out all the information related to meta title, description, meta. So it's just basically handled like a header, a footer, or any other components. And it's a, it's a link to its own page. Yeah. I see a question from Ronnie. Let's consider Eve has several trainees preparing the content for him. How would implement a validation workflow from the backend part? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> it's a great <laughs> question, and uh, uh, I don't know uh, the, the the proverb in uh, in English, but we have uh, this uh, this uh, phrase in French, which is "les cordonniers sont toujours les plus mal chaussés," and it means that uh, uh, we don't uh, we don't have uh, 
let's forget what I, what I wanted to say. But uh, my point is that we didn't um, we didn't implement yet the role-based access control uh, on uh, our website. So for the moment, we don't have that validation workflow. And uh, actually, it would be the it would be the subject for our next webinar. Uh, because that would be very interesting to, to showcase because we have that need, but uh, we, we didn't uh, implement it yet. Uh, but if we wanted to implement it, we just uh, would need to uh, define the, the permissions uh, for different uh, user types. And uh, we could just have uh, some, uh, the, those trainees could have all the writing access, the, the, creation, the creating access for the blog post, for example. And uh, they would not have the, the other uh, access to the settings or to anything to, to publish, for example. And I would be the one uh, able to uh, edit uh, and validate and publish. So yeah, um, Daniel, do you have other questions? Uh, no, I'm done. Uh, so I'm just sharing a, a link to the webinar we had a couple of months ago uh, where we went through the role-based access control. So if you're looking at implementing a system where you have uh, different uh, a validation workflow per se, uh, that would be very helpful for you. Uh, on another note, I just want to point out that we have a couple of polls in the polls tab. So if you look at that, please answer them. Would um, love to know a few things from you. But I think uh, on my end, uh, that's that's it on questions. I don't know if anyone else has uh, questions. Well, I think we had one, maybe Jerry, Derek and Jim could answer this one. Yeah, I see Derek typing on uh, the other JS libraries that Strapi uses under the hood. Uh Oh, what? Uh, like um, the JavaScript libraries that Strapi uses uh, under the hood. Uh, oh, the Strapi, the Strapi website is using Next.js and React uh, to, for the framework and the library. And I don't know how you build the back office of Strapi, but I think it's, it's React as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's React, and I see that Derek is uh, is replying, so uh, he'll be more proficient <laughs> to answer yeah. than me. But I know that uh, Strapi is based on uh, other open source uh, libraries, and that's also one one of the reasons why we will always stay open source, and and because we feel we we know that Strapi is made uh, thanks to other uh, project, and we will always support that. Uh, uh, I have a question from Ronnie. Building universal pages is definitely not easy. How do you do the preview uh, your content before publishing it to production? Do you need to manually test it on the staging environment or do you have another way to preview content before publishing it? Uh, super uh, interesting question, Ronnie. Um, Actually, uh, we had that uh, that problem. Uh, we the workflow was first to uh, to publish and test on the staging environment. It's actually something that we still do uh, for uh, some pages for for like um, I would say uh, uh, when we, it's actually something that we do when we need to do some editing on some pages that exist at the moment. But uh, if we need to uh, preview. Uh, a page, we have a, um, a functionality that Mario implemented and that maybe Mario, I'll let you explain how, uh, how it works. Sure. So we're using the, the preview mode that, um, that is allowed by Next.js. So you can, uh, you can check out the documentation on the Next.js uh, website and you'll see some, some, some very, very good tips on how to implement the preview mode with uh, almost every CMS available right now. So basically, you, you can see that um, on every universal page, you have a status. So a universal page can either be published or, or as a draft. And then we will say Next.js to only build the published 
published um, universal pages, so it will not be available um, on the live website. However, uh, you can use an internal API uh, route. You can name it whatever you want, but most of the time you, you, you will have to use API slash preview. And that corresponds to the, um, to the actual folder names on your app, on your Next.js app. And you will need some, uh, some ex extra, I mean, additional information to access a very specific URL using a slug and, um, and another confidential uh, information. And that will allow you to enter uh, in the preview mode using a cookie that is, that is set by Next.js, and you will be able to see your current uh, draft page. So it is not published, not available to the public, but uh, Eve has all the required information to access that, um, that page. Yeah, exactly. And so it allows me to, uh, to preview those, uh, those pages. Uh, so we have set it up for universal pages and single uh, tab pages. Okay. And uh, sorry, and uh, blog post pages. Yep. Rani, does it answer your question? No worries. How do you move content from for the site from staging to production? Well, that's uh, that's something that we need to improve on. <laughs> <laughs> we we know that uh, we have room for improvement uh, on that uh, aspect. Um, so for the moment, we don't uh, move content. We just uh, we just uh, uh, change the database directly in production. <laughs> but but we know that we need to uh, to 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 work on those. Uh, Migration functionalities and it's uh, it's uh, it's in the pipe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, something that we need to, uh, to improve on. Um, and we have a question from Scott. As I see, how would you handle something like blog post for SEO? Would you go with SSG or SSR approach? Uh, I think it's better to have a static uh, rendering instead of server rendering when it's available. So I would say it's better when you are statically rendering your blog post. Uh, but it's, uh, for the grid of articles uh, on the Strapi website, for example, we use uh, SSG because uh, this part is moving a lot. And, and we don't want to uh, build uh, the whole website. Uh, uh, every every time uh, we publish an article, we don't want to uh, rebuild uh, the five, uh, the twenty pages of uh, grid of articles. So we are using SSG on uh, on uh, uh, the static generation on the blog post on uh, the server uh, rendering on the grid of articles. But I think now next is uh, as a new features called. Uh, I don't know how it's called, but it it how it allows you to uh, re-render your static routes uh, every time uh, somebody is connecting to the mm -hmm. to your page. So I think I can say that right now you can basically use uh, static rendering for your blog post and uh, your grid of articles. I don't know if it's answer your question. Yeah, I'm just not sharing my screen because I don't show anything. So it's better that we see yourself. Um, yeah, Scott yeah. says, yeah, nice. So you do SSR for posts themselves? Uh, no, I mean we do S, um, we do SSR for the grid, like uh, slash blog, and and when you are on the blog post, it's uh, statically rendered. And yeah, it's called incremental regeneration. <laughs> Great. Um, so I think we can take the last couple of questions. Yeah, sure. That's what we're, we're, we're almost at time. Um, I'll, I'm just here to remind everyone to check the polls again. And uh, yeah, you can take over. Is. 
We have a question of from Fred. Uh, Hi, Oren, congrats. You have the content type field nested in the components. I wanted to do the same, but I wasn't able to filter for component fields. How do you filter for that field? Get it at some point. Thanks. Maybe Raoul, I don't know if you had that. Uh, I'm not sure I understood the question. Uh, I'm a bit lost in the question right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think they're trying to ask how you access uh, data in nested components. Uh, it's basically rendering an object in the front end. Oh, oh. Uh, maybe I can share my my screen again. Sure. Uh, so basically. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can take an example. Uh, Maybe for the related yeah. articles. Uh, okay. Uh, related articles. Mm. Okay. So we are going to the related articles grid. Well, I think you'll have to go to the. Yeah, on the page. Mm. Uh, can, I can find the pages. So I will go to an universal pages. Uh, right here. So, okay. could you just zoom in a bit? Yeah. So basically, I will fetch my page to Strapi. Uh, I have the props. Uh, as I said later, uh, when some sometimes you have to fetch more data in your slices. So a first call to Strapi, then you are mapping to on all of your slices, and you are fetching uh, additional dependencies. So I'm going to here. And uh, for example, we can take the related articles uh, slice. Uh, for example, maybe the related uh, tutorials can be better. So basically, we are fetching uh, additional data for uh, related tutorials or articles. And uh, how the data is uh, is uh, run the, the 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 form of the data uh, is basically an object is is basically a nested object. I don't know if I can. I'll show you how it how it looks right now, but uh, it's exactly it's just a simple nested object. I I'm not really sure I correctly understand the question. But the question was how Strapi is rendering uh, nested components. It's basically a nested object. Patients from which field was that? What? We don't hear you. Said you were using related articles. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe Marion can explain a bit better because I'm in a bit close. Yeah, basically there is a there is a component that Eve can use, and it's called related articles or related blog posts, and it allows him to 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 showcase like one two three uh, articles related to one specific um, uh, topic for example so this is a, a relational field because he can set up um, to showcase uh, this this one or this one or that one or that article whatever and so we only get some very basic information about those related articles like the id but if you want to showcase them like more interestingly for a user, uh, we need to fetch maybe uh, an image, uh, a title, a short description, and that is only allowed if we uh, get if we make an additional API call to get all those relevant information. I don't know if, I don't know if that answers your question. 
So hopefully it does. Uh, I think Jim has given some additional context to the question also. Yeah. I believe uh, maybe we, we, we didn't we didn't exactly understand the question properly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, at, at at least they've uh, they've Half. got uh, someone did. Someone Fred did. said that uh, you answered the question, so well done. Oh, okay, Perfect. great. So um, I, I just want to point out that we have the forum. If you have any questions that need a uh, long form discussion, or if you have uh, any types, yeah, thank you, Derek, for sharing um, for sharing the link to the forum. Uh, and yeah, we are happy to answer your questions on the forum. Please check that out. And um, we are right on time. I think we've mm -hmm. answered mm. all the questions. Um, any other questions I think we can deal with in the forum, but just so that this video stays as short as possible. Um, sorry to hijack this from you, Eves. <laughs> no, um, it's not um, a lot of time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, sorry for the disturbance at the beginning. Uh, the storm is over and I have survived. Uh, thank you so much, Eves, for being very graceful with your presentation and You're showing welcome. off how strappy looks. Yeah. And thank you for our friends from Unlikely. You have done an amazing job with our website, and um, yeah, this this goes to show how everyone is super interested in seeing how it was how it was built. Uh, and thank you, everyone, also for coming on. Um, I hope you appreciated the showcase. We'll upload the video on YouTube and we'll share it with everyone else, so you can have a have a look just in case you missed something. And feel free to, um, to drop by uh, by email. Um... Twitter to ask uh, us anything. We're always happy when we can to answer your questions. Yes. Um, do you want to drop your Twitter accounts uh, down there yeah. in the chat so that people can reach out in case they want to? And thanks again, Jim, also for um, dropping the, the unlikely link. I really like their slogan. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So um, have a have a good night, have a good day, have a have a good everything, everyone. Thanks for coming on again, and um, thank you for having us. And uh, thank you, Daniel. Soon. Thank you all. Thank all you. Right. Bye. 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 Have a good one.